So why don't we start with Gray? We can just go in alphabetical order by last name. Why don't you share, um, when you introduce yourself, just your name, pronouns, um, what you currently do for work, and anything else you think would be good for the audience to know about you. Sure, so greetings everybody. My name is Gray Beatty. I use they, them, theirs pronouns as well as he, him, his. I identify as gender non-binary and I am now a fourth year doctoral student in the Department of Nuclear Engineering here at Berkeley. Um, I'm really excited to be on this panel. I love speaking about my um, non-linear experiences getting to where I am today. Um, and a little bit about my background. I'm from Los Angeles, California, city proper. Um, I have uh, two bachelor's degrees. Um, I double majored at MIT in nuclear engineering and physics. And then I obtained a master's degree in medical physics from the University of Wisconsin-Madison. And now, fingers crossed for my last degree, I'm working on my PhD here at UC Berkeley in nuclear engineering. So I'm open to all questions about grad life and um, the hunt for internships and things of that nature. So welcome everybody. Thanks, Gray. Michelle, you can go next. Hello. Um, so my name is Michelle. I am, I, I'm originally from Venezuela. Um, I completed my university, my undergrad here in Northeastern University in Boston. And right now I'm working as a sales engineer for Visa, the payments company. Um, I think that <laughs> that's for me. Thanks, Michelle. Abdul? Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Abdul Aziz, and uh, I am uh, currently a graduate student in the structural engineering, uh, mechanics, and material uh, department, like under, under the civil and environmental engineering department at UC Berkeley. Um, I did my undergraduate at Berkeley uh, as a civil and environmental engineering tool. And uh, I'm originally from Cote d'Ivoire, which is in West Africa but I went to high school in South Africa and quite visited other countries like Singapore, Philippines, France, Dubai. Uh, and yeah, I'm definitely open to any, other, any question when it comes to like job search or uh, research, uh, yeah, opportunities and so on and so forth, yeah. Thanks, Abdul. And Christine? Hi everyone, I'm Christine. I'm from Pleasanton, California. I went to Berkeley and worked a little bit in San Francisco and now I'm located in New York. Uh, I'm currently working at Google and I've had experience with um, startup in the past as well. And I used to work also at Electronic Arts. Um, so I'm happy to answer any of those questions along with, I guess, my journey to get here. Thanks, Christine. So we're gonna start with some questions for the panelists. So why don't we begin with um, Christine and Michelle for this first one. How did you go about searching for internships and job opportunities when you were a student and what resources did you find most helpful? And then we can ask Abdul and Gray for your perspective um, as student researchers currently. So yeah, um, Christine, would you like to start us off? Sure. Um, yeah, so I guess I, I think I graduated in 2013 um, with my bachelor's in EECS, so this might be a little dated, but I, when I was looking for internship and job opportunities, I pretty much um, went to every single career fair. I talked to everyone, not only the big companies, but all the little companies that I had never heard about. Um, and frankly, some of them I wasn't even interested in. But now, honestly, looking back, a lot of those companies have become fully fledged startups. Some of them have even IPO'd um, and they're all doing really well. So uh, I would say don't write off a small company just if, because you don't know the name of it. Um, also practice giving your elevator pitch. So like I would have like a whole spiel that I would say to the recruiter and talk about some of my projects. And I think that might have impressed them. Um, I also subscribed to all the email lists and um, applied to whatever kind of came my way. And 
I made it known to all of my friends and peers that I was looking for a certain position in certain companies. And um, sometimes they would see something that was open that they thought I might be interested in and they would send that to me. So that's actually how I got one of my internships. Um, and I would say, I guess this isn't part of the question, but to stand out, um, hackathons were really helpful in kind of creating uh, and making these projects that stand out compared to everyone else who are who is taking the same classes as you. So you don't even have to have a finished result to show. You just basically need to talk to the process and talk about what you learned. So that was it for me. Thanks. Yeah, it's good to hear that those larger events like career fairs were helpful, but also the smaller connections that you've made. Michelle, um, what kind of insight do you have for this first question? Um, I think it's similar to Christine. I think it, getting a job or looking for a job is simply a full-time job. And that's how I took it. I remember I graduated and I still didn't have a job. I was still applying. Um, and I decided to have my job um, schedule, um, my personal job schedule to be my full-time job search. So it's, it's kind of the way I, I think it's kind of the process. Sometimes we want to get to the destination and the result in one second, but life's, things in life take time. So we need to know that and we need to know it's normal if it's taking time because it's simply a, a, a trial and error and simply getting better at it. I also think that um, it's very important to put yourself out there to connect with people, um, to open doors, even if they are not open still, uh, yet. And one thing, oh, remember when Christine was talking, um, I remember an interview that I had to you know, to commute like half an hour, 40 minutes. And I decided for those half an hour and those 40 minutes to literally talk my resume through by myself. I was those 40 minutes talking my resume through, like if I was explaining it to someone. And I never felt so prepared as when I got in that inter interview and they start asking me questions. It's been amazing. And, you know, there's like a famous saying from Tiger Woods that he was asked like, Something about luck, like, is it luck? I don't remember exactly what it is. And his answer but was, maybe it is, but I, I, I kind of realized that the more I practice, the luckier I get. So it's that, it's, you know, repetition and being confident with what you are and that's what you're going to show out there. Thanks, Michelle. I love how you said looking for a job is a full-time job. <laughs> I think that's so true in a lot of ways. And a key to that, I think, is just, the consistency in your search. Like you don't have to, you know, put a ton of time into your search in, in a short amount of time, right? You want to kind of spread it out, maybe doing a couple hours every week um, to set yourself up for success. All right, why don't we turn it over to Abdul? Would you like to share your thoughts on the first question? Yeah, um, I think I'll pick up where uh, Michelle took off about like being prepared even like before trying to search for those internship. Um, so a little bit about myself is that I came from South Africa directly to, because I did high school, uh, my high school there and I uh, came directly to UC Berkeley and all of this was pretty new for me. And uh, it was a little hard at the beginning because I didn't really understood how this whole system was working. But I feel like being able to, um, really sizing first opportunities and the academic sphere really helped me a lot. You know, when it comes to um, being in some clubs, uh, being in uh, like some, um, being in some research, like having research position with like some professors. I think those are small things that like really helped me build my resume before even, before even being able to, you know, put myself like out there. As she said, like, it's not about luck, but like, I feel like putting like some work on like what you have. So you have like something substantial before, like, you know, reaching on the stage of like, oh, internship or job opportunities. I always tell people that, you know, it's good that you rely all the project that you did in your classes, but guess what? Like 50 or a hundred of your peers, like have the same project. Like how do you basically differentiate yourself and by what, by doing like those research, by like talking to professors 
And as I said, like building those connection, that really helped, right? Uh, and another thing I will say is like, um, I feel like branching out to a, to a field that is closely related to yours, it's also really important, you know, to set yourself apart from others. And my way of doing that was to be involved like in data science and computer science in a sense, you know, uh, I'm not the best at it, but like, I feel like being able to like reach out for some small opportunity that connect basically like data science and structural engineering, for example, really helped me, you know, show that I was special and so that I was different. And like that basically like led me to like doing some project like with Google and so on and so forth. Even though I was like a structural engineer, I feel like that really, really helped me set myself out there, you know? Uh, yeah, I think that's like one advice I would say, just like trying to branch out a little bit, not far away from your field. And I gain some opportunities in the academic sphere before even like wanting to put yourself out there. Yeah. Thanks, Abdul. Yeah, being flexible in the kinds of opportunities that are gonna help you gain skills in your area. That's great advice. And Gray, how about you? Sure, I'd love to piggyback off of what all of our panelists said and try to sum it up coherently. I want to echo, first of all, the, the importance of career fairs as overwhelming as they are. They really are a great opportunity to, to have the ear of people who do the hiring and to connect that with what Abdul just said about the, the need to differentiate yourself and, and also what Michelle was saying about having your pitch ready. All of these things are, are really important. What we're trying to do is we understand that a lot of us are looking for, for similar positions, but what really makes it unique is how you differentiate yourself and what interest you actually have, right? And so these are the things that really set you aside from everybody else's. What are you really trying to do with, with this degree? What are you trying to do at this company? What projects are you interested in? How does that connect with the current classwork that you're doing? I only have experience within the, the graduate student realm. So this is um, the path that I've been on is um, the, the requirement of to do research on a graduate level, you need to have ideally done some research in the past. And so the caveat to that is you need to have networked and one put yourself out there and as uncomfortable as that is, it's those in-person connections that really facilitate um, the, the positions that you get. With my second internship that I got, it was from a recruiter that I had followed up with two years ago and he recognized me at a career fair later and said, oh, are you still interested in physics? There's a position here. And having um, what I wanted to do ready helped and also having um, a, a tight a somewhat tight, but a, a coherent resume ready that really explains what you have done already is important. So those are those are my um, my three points: is differentiation, putting yourself out there, and and also following up with people is really really vital. People really feed off of your interest, and and if you part of it is understanding that. Um, you don't get hired for every position and that you also that's part of putting yourself out there is is um the application process but also the last point i wanted to make is in order to get these positions um letters of recommendation are paramount i don't think we talk about them enough frankly but to get into these these other positions not only do um we need to be we as in the hires whatever i'm not the we but the hiring people need to not only understand your passion but see um verification or or have somebody vouch for your passions and your your abilities and so that involves making personal connections with people in positions of power if that's um a professor in a course you know um for me one of the the really influential connections i made at the career fair was um a graduate student um, her name's Meltem Erol. She's not a graduate student. She works for the College of Engineering. Well, ultimately, she does recruitment and retention for the College of Engineering here at Berkeley. And having people who can also, even if you're not necessarily hoping to work with a certain place, they can still give you pointers on what they're looking for in this case. And for, for in this specific case, for me, it allowed me to refine um, how I was 
formulating my graduate school application. And that in turn helped me know more of what graduate schools and consequently other research institutions are wanting, um, what information they're wanting and how they like it conveyed. And so this is just the importance of meeting different people and seeing what ways their skills can be valuable to you and vice versa to get you in the positions that you want. Thanks, Gray. Yeah, those connections and following up is really key. And this is a, a perfect segue to um, the next topic here of networking, which can be difficult, right? We often hear, well, um, that students should, you know, reach out to people at companies um, and ask for things like referrals. But that can be difficult or it's hard to know how to do that, right? Especially if you don't know anyone at these companies or if you haven't had friends or family who have been in the higher education realm or graduate school. So yeah, if you all could share a little bit about how you built those connections, that would be great. And why don't we start with Michelle for this one? Uh, sure. <clears throat> but before I answer this one, I just wanna add one more thing to the searching for an internship or a job. One resource that really helped me was in my university there was like a job opening list of companies that are already connected with the university. So I remember that was a very, very valuable resource when I was applying for co-ops or internships because um, they, they, were, they already had that connection and it, it leveraged my resume and it helped uh, to put myself out there easier and differentiate me from other applications. Having said that, um, I'm gonna go to the networking question. So, when it's difficult to network, when, you, when there are no connections out there, what can you do? I recently read a book, a book called The Third Door. It talks about a college student who wanted to interview Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, uh, Steven Spielberg, uh, Pitbull, so different uh, magnetic people from, from the business world. And he started from zero, no connections. If you haven't read the book, I really recommend it. And it talks about how you can put yourself out there, how you need to, how there are three different lines. First, you have the line where everybody enters and it's simply the line that, you know, you're, you're outside of the party and there's a very long line. So you can wait there and wait until your turn goes and you're not gonna be different. Then there's a VIP line and those are the people that have connections. So they'll probably jump the line and go first. And the third door is, is the one where people don't have connection, but they do things different. So they talk with people that may, may introduce you to other people that can help you get into there. So we wanna take it in the metaphorical way. You get through the window of the kitchen and then you go into the party, which is what you wanna get on the goal. So I'm talking super abstract here, but what I wanna say is that don't limit yourself. Don't put yourself in a box of doing what everybody does. Go out there, talk to people. People are striving and are, are really like, desiring per personal connections. So don't feel that you are um, kind of, um, people are trying to avoid when you ask them questions. People have contacted me when, you know, I work at Visa and when they apply to things, they contact me. And it's really amazing to see people in the position where I was some years ago. So feel free, go out there and simply shoot a small message. If it's difficult for you to start with a very big message and detail it, shoot a standard message. Hey, I'm interested. Nice to meet you. You know, very friendly, very short and sweet that can start a conversation with someone or a relationship. Having said that, um, one more thing that I want to do, say here, is apply. Um, I, I remember what I wanted to say here. So there are many organizations out there and there are people in those big organizations. I wanna tell you, and I really want you to remember this, those people are human. Those people have friends, those people eat, those people go to the bathroom. So they are simply humans. Don't feel intimidated, don't feel you're less, you're valuable. If you go into an organization, you're gonna bring a lot of valuable to the team you're in and feel that way. Because if you do, then you're gonna make others feel that way about you too. Thank you. Thanks so much, Michelle. Christine, as another engineer in industry, how did you build connections along the way? 
Um, first of all, that was incredibly worded, Michelle. That was a great response. I learned from that. Um, as for me, I think I was fortunate, or I guess um, when I was in college, I really made an effort to join a lot of undergraduate groups. Um, the one that really connected with me was Theta Tau, which is like a professional engineering fraternity. I think the majority of my referrals for my jobs were actually through brothers in the organization. So ask anyone to network. You ask your friends, make friends, um, go to conferences. I know that's not very easy during the pandemic, so they're more virtual, but once um, we all have our vaccines, um, that will be a really viable option. I met a lot of people through Grace Hopper Conference, for example. Um, I've actually had random people, random students message me through LinkedIn, and I've responded to a few of them. So that also is a way to network. And I would say just don't be afraid to even ask people you don't know very well. I've had um, people I haven't talked to in 10, 20 years uh, ask me for referrals or ask me how something is going. And then we've made this like network that's kind of like lasted throughout the years. You don't have to talk all the time. You don't have to be friends, but people want to help each other get jobs. Um, so another thing that I really took advantage of was like mentorship programs. I'm sure, I'm sure Berkeley has them, um, engineering, like whatever organization you might want to join probably has some kind of program like that. And it's incredibly useful because if it's literally someone who has gone through the exact same thing as you just a few years ago, and they'll know how to kind of like pick your way through that crazy maze of getting to a job, getting to adulthood. So um, those are really, really useful. And honestly, any kind of forum, any kind of community uh, is useful. For example, I've even been reached out to on Reddit. Uh, certain subreddits, like I think CS Career Advice or Questions or something, um, is often littered by a lot of people who want to help and want to help you connect and network, and want to make you know, your life better. So just don't be afraid to reach out. And like Michelle said, like, everyone there is a person, you're a person, like you are a great person that pe other people want to get to know as well. So by reaching out and making a connection, you're helping them make a connection with you too. Thanks, Christine. Yeah, it, it definitely is okay to reach out to strangers. I know it can be intimidating sometimes um, and it's hard to know what to say, but it is totally appropriate and it happens. So I'd be happy to chat with you all in one-on-one -on -one appointments um, on how you could do that um, if you wanted. And Gray, did you have anything more to add um, to your advice on networking? I did. I wanted to piggyback off of what Christine said about these these organizations that exist. In, in college, one of the ones that I um, leaned heavily upon was the National Society of Black Engineers. And so um, this organization in particular, um, the student chapters have a lot of collaboration with, with sponsors. And so in turn for them donating money to the chapters, the, the sponsors also want um, diverse students to become a part of their companies and their organizations. And one of the many ways that they do that is by hosting like networking suites, for example, where um, in the cases that I've experienced, it's it's free food and you get to talk to recruiters. And so it's, the, it's a win-win for me. You go there, you get fed, and then you also get a chance to talk with people. Um, and, and the sorts of suites can range from um, resume building work spot workshops to just um, drop-in sessions where you're just chatting with recruiters and trying to see what sorts of positions and experiences are available inside the inside these places. So um, that for me was the, the one that I wanted to add about networking. And I just also really wanted to say, um, applying for stuff, what, what I'm hearing the older I get is um, nobody is really applied, for, really, um, what is it, qualified for positions, you just got to apply anyways. And so I, I put that in my, in my own colloquial terms, like shoot your shot, 
You know, don't be afraid to go for the big internships because you got to get a foothold somewhere. And it, it really only starts with one, in my opinion. Once one place sees that you've done work with another place, and ideally, if you get a good recommendation letter from that, it really sets it in. So, so don't get too disheartened by a lot of no's. Um, especially um, younger in, in, in college. Like I got rejected my freshman year from all like 11 of the internships that I applied to and got into one my sophomore year. And that was the, the one I needed at a national laboratory. And, and that's really what kind of like opened the doors for these things is, is putting yourself out there. I can't emphasize enough how great uh, uh, a random email is um, to somebody that you might not know as well. What's the worst that can happen? They don't respond. You know, at the end of the day, it's just some text that you sent. But in the best case scenario, you know, that could potentially be a job offer. And so um, I think um, networking, I, it's it's so overemphasized and underemphasized simultaneously because it really just takes that one connection to push you through the door or give you that boost up into the window, like Michelle was saying, to get into the house where you want to be. Thanks, Gray, for that insight. Abdul, do you have anything to add about networking? Uh, I think they'll cover everything, but I wanted to touch on the this idea of persistence. I think that's like really important. Uh, I remember the first time I was, uh, I wanted to do like a research in structural engineering. And I was really interested in that professor. Uh, that professor was really interested in the work that he was doing. And I reached out, you know, uh, all the best email drafting the, the most amazing email ever. And the person, the, the professor didn't reach out. He didn't get back to me after two weeks. I was like, okay, no problem. Then I went to his office hours and then I met him there and I talked to him. And after all, he saw you get back to me after three weeks, he never got back to me. But I, I kept going there until one day he was like, oh, okay, sorry, I got, I was really busy. And like, so I have an idea. I have this PhD student that's working on that. And yeah, if you want to join him, you can definitely join him. As Grace said, please like, never give up in a sense like it's just like you know i feel like you just have to push in a sense like even if you get like i don't know how many no's i got like during my call as an undergrad like i remember uh during a time like every single week i'll receive like two or three no's from company that i applied for and like i think that's that's definitely okay i feel like when you get that one company that takes you you know, you just do the best out of it. And I will also point to the fact that when you get that first company or like that first opportunity, take advantage of the connection that you are making there. Uh, you know, it can go in a long way, even though, even though sometimes it may not be even related to your field. Like for example, when I started this passion of mine, like in structure engine, uh, in data science, how it can combine to, to be combined to structural engineering. And I did this academic program with Google. Some of the people that I'm actually talking to right now, and some of them that wrote me a recommendation letter for grad school, are those people from Google, even though it's not like related to structural engineering. But, you know, being able to like build those connections, even when you are like in the internship, like a week ago, like uh, the VP of like a company, structural engineering company, sent me an email saying that, oh, do you want to come work for us? You know, it's just like even during like the internship, you know, or like whatever thing that you are doing, if it's research, if it's like a club or so on and so forth, every single connection that you have, if you can ask for like a, a card that you can keep in your wallet, just do that. Just keep in connect because you never know when like your luck can like, you know, come. come. So yeah, I feel like that's like the advice that I would give. Thanks for that, Abdul. Yeah, that persistence is really important because, yeah, like you said, it's normal to get um, rejections or no response at all in the job search process. So just keeping it in mind that, you know, it, you have skills, you've got, you know, what the qualifications that employers are looking for. So it will happen um, and persistence is definitely key to that. 
All right, so for this next one, we can switch gears a little bit and talk about interviewing. So I'll just kind of open the floor. Um, does any of you, do any of you, sorry, want to get started uh, with some interview advice? I can go. Um, my interview advice, I think, is a little bit more cited towards software engineering, but um, there's there are behavioral parts as well. But for technical, um, I'm sure you can find some some resources. But like, Leet Code is a huge bank for questions that are commonly asked in interviews at pretty much any company. Um, Pramp is a like a software that you can use to actually mock interview and get interviewed by strangers who also want to practice. Um, and I would say do plenty of mock interviews with your friends and peers. And that all goes down to just practicing, practicing um, whatever you tend to get asked in your interviews, whether that be for software engineering, it's data structures and algorithms, whether that be um, whiteboarding something, like having to draw a diagram or doing a case study. Um, practice talking everything out and eventually it will be so much easier and like less, I guess, anxiety inducing. I know the first few interviews I had, I couldn't even think. I would just blanked out every time someone asked me a question. My heart was beating so fast. I could like taste my stomach through my mouth. Um, and I think maybe my fifth or sixth one, it was a lot better. Um, in terms of I guess behavioral questions, practice talking about common situations, like how you dealt with an obstacle in a project or sometime you may have challenged the status quo. And I think the main, the main thing that <laughs> I want you to come away with this or come away from this with is to be someone that the interviewer wants to work with. Like you want to be eager, you want to be energetic. At this point, you may not have that much experience in the industry but you want to give off the impression that you're ready to learn because that's really all they're asking from you at this point you want to be a sponge you want to absorb all the information and be happy to be there um, you're interviewing them too for being someone you want to work with so you want to act as someone that they want to work with and yeah as, as someone who's interviewed a lot of people i think that is usually what stands out to me when it's someone that I'm like, wow, I want them to be my coworker. They're smart and they seem like they're good at communicating and they seem fun. Um, so that's a big part of it. Thanks, Christine. Um, how about, yeah, Michelle, um, as someone else in industry, what kind of advice do you have? Um, I think that my advice would start from the question before. Networking and building relationships doesn't stop at getting the interview. I think that those relationships can also be used to ace that interview. So I remember when I was interviewing for different companies, I would always try to contact people inside of the company or former employees on and talk about the culture of the company, talk about the team I was gonna be interviewed to, interviewed in, talk about the person that was going to interview me. So I, I got a little bit of, of information that I could use uh, to better put myself, to put myself better out there. So, so that's the first thing I would say. Now, imagine that you already did your due diligence, you talked about it, you're in the interview. Um, there are technical questions where I think it's very important for you to show real uh, results driven impact that you've done, you know, in numbers, in, in dollar signs, which at the end is, is what makes a difference in, in big corporations. And show your legacy, show how things were before you got to a place and how things were after you left and how it marked, a, you know, it, it made a difference. It doesn't have to be work. It can be in a project. It can be um, anywhere simply in a place where you started something and you left and when you left it was different and more po and you impacted it positively. Having said that, the third thing that I would say, apart from all the results driven points, 
um, all the technical side. I think that one of the most important things in an interview is to connect emotionally with the person you're interviewing. Christine talked about this. They need to, they should want to work with you. Otherwise, there's no chance. Um, you need to connect. You need to also get to know the person. Remember, from the premise, they are also humans. So don't be afraid to chat. Don't be afraid to be yourself. They don't expect a robot. They expect a human being who makes errors, but simply embraces them and try to get better from them. Sometimes fails. Sometimes it hurts. It's completely human. Just connect emotionally with that person. And don't forget that, that they are a person and that they want to work with another person. That it would be. Thanks for that. Yeah, sharing impacts of your work and that human connection, definitely important. All right, Gray and Abdul, would you like to share um, from your perspective as graduate student researcher? Sure, I don't mind if that's okay with Abdul. Um, my, my points are, are more so from um, the graduate school interview process perspective because that's what I got a lot of experience in and then I, I want to relate that to the to the internship um the internship chase as well both of them I would say involve um learning about how to explain your work in layman's terms and and that I think will translate how passionate you are about it um, and also um, how good you are at it. I think um, the sign of a quality scientist, in, in my opinion, is somebody who not only can conduct the work, but can communicate it coherently to anybody so that they can understand why this work is important in the first place. Um, and then my, my second pro tip would be um, do your research when going into these interviews in the first place. I think with um, a lot of these places, for example, with summer internships, I can still find some of my old presentations online. And so looking into what students have done in the past will give you a really good idea of, of what the expectations are for students henceforth. And so seeing like, oh, you might say, oh, I saw this project and I liked it, or, um, oh, I see this person um, is a part of this organization. And with respect to like faculty members for grad school, oh, I've looked into your research and this specifically interests me. So beyond just coming in there and saying, here's my resume, I'm going to do good work. You can also show vested interest in the work that the organization is doing as well. And I think that personalizes your experience instead of it just being like, hey, I'm in the sciences and I need a job. It's like, hey, I'm in the sciences and I'm specifically interested in applied physics and you can, I'm not, but that's just an example and you can go from there. Um, so, um, and then also, you can reach out to those people beforehand with um, my graduate school application process. Part of it was being able to learn more about the, the professors before you even get face to face to have that interview process. You might need to hunt them down like Abdul did to get a response, but um, I do think in general, people are open to everybody likes questions getting asked about work that they're passionate about. And so you'll, you'll come to see like everybody loves talking about their own work. And so the more interest you show in that, I think the more you'll um, elicit that professional connection that we're looking for and, and um, really gain some excitement on both ends for you to be working there in a culture that you like and this person to want you to be a part of that culture. Thank you, Gray. Abdul, do you have any final advice for interviewing? Yeah, uh, let's go back to the basis here. I think, I think one thing that's important for me in terms of interviewing is like how you dress. I think that's like one important thing that I think a lot of people overlook it, but whether the interview is online or, or it is in person, I always dress up fully in suit because I believe that if I feel confident on my own and how I look and how I definitely dress, I'll be able to perform better in that, in that interview. And I feel like those are things that like people shouldn't take for granted. I got jobs because I, I look like professional or I look really serious about what I was doing. So I think that's like one thing that's like extremely important, you know, even if you don't have a suit, like I had, I sometimes had to borrow stuff, a tie from a friend or whatsoever. Like that's definitely okay. Just, you know, that's like, I feel like that's one first things. 
uh, for me especially. The second thing is that, um, you know, as like, like Michelle and Gray and like Christine said, it's just like, you know, a com like a conversation between like you and the interview, uh, the interview, especially like when it comes to technical question, for example, I think one aspect of it is that if you are stuck on something, you know, it's always a good idea to just like ask for a tip, not necessarily like, or show me the answer, but like, what is a tip, you know, and be able to explain what are your thought process, even like in computer science, like when you are given like a white, like a marker or a whiteboard, right? And like, when you are writing something, uh, like I'm always advised that to, you know, even if you are not able to finish a question, writing down your steps or how you are thinking of going about it is like really important, you know? So the other thing is that, um, Whatever you put on your resume, make sure that make sure that like you do have a full understanding of every single thing you put on your resume. Like that one. Because like imagine I gave you a piece of paper. I'm writing about myself. I, I write it like a story about myself. And then I give it to you. And then you ask me a question about like that story, and I'm like, oh. Oh, I don't quite remember that story. Why I don't quite remember that part? Like, like you, know, <laughs> I don't know if you understand like how that feels. And like I feel like, and it happened, you know, during like I went to the Philippines and the Singapore, for example, uh, to the Philippines and Singapore, and then during one like structural engineering question, the guy was from the Philippines and he asked me, "Oh, what did you do in the Philippines?" It's like, "Oh, I went to those like structural engineering companies and like you know visit them." Oh, what did you think? and so on and so forth. Like, question, when you give your resume to someone, like have an understanding of like what you did put on your resume, the software that you use, the program that you use, like trying to understand, not like exactly what the technical part of a program, whatever, but like, what does the program output, for example? What does it, pro what do you input into the program? Why did you choose this program instead of the other program? So those small details are really, really much important. And they can really surface during an interview out of nowhere. And I'm saying that because I had an interview like a week ago and like the same thing happened. And luckily for me, I was like, I really had an understanding of what I put on my resume. Yeah. Thanks, Abdul. Yeah, super important. Often they'll ask you about your projects and your experiences from your resume. All right, so each of these topics we could dedicate a whole event to. We have, there's so much insight that, you know, we could discuss, but for sake of time, I think it's best if we just move to student questions at this point. So I'm going to stop recording and stop sharing.